time now for sports news. Here's Barong Tony Uranta. Thank you, Amarachi, and welcome to Sports News. And we begin with the Pride Ring, where Ekumins have continued to pour in for the Nigerian British born boxer Anthony Joshua for his world heavyweight title victory at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff on Saturday. At the cabinet meeting at the governor's office in Abiyogoda, the Ogun State Capital, top government functionaries spoke glowingly of the boxing champion for making the state and indeed Nigeria proud. Joshua, an Ogun State indigent, got his 20th knockout in defeating Carlos Takim in the 10th round to retain his crown. The passion for what he loves to do. And uh, Ogun State is very proud of him. Not only because he's, a, he's an indigent of Ogun State, but he's also a world, he's in the world map and he's being supported by the world in its entirety. He is currently the heavyweight um, boxing champion. Super Eagles technical advisor Jernot Rohr has called up 24 players ahead of the final game of qualifiers for the 2018 World Cup away to Algeria. Coach Rohr is also expected to use the same list for the prestigious friendly with Argentina in Russia four days after the game against the Algerians. Although the Super Eagles have already scored, secured one of the five slots for Africa, Coach Rohr is sticking with the majority of the players that won the ticket for the World Cup against Zambia. There is, however, a first call for impressive Deportivo La Coruña of Spain goalkeeper Francis Uzuho, as well as former Under-17 World Cup winner Chidia Bere Mwakali, who has also been placed on standby only by, for the friendly with Argentina. All invited players are expected to arrive in camp in Morocco on the 6th of November. Meanwhile, Nigeria's under-20 women's side, the Falconettes, will travel to Morocco on Wednesday ahead of their World Cup qualifier against the North Africans. Coach Christopher Danjuma expects experience will count in favor of his team when they take on the Moroccans in the first leg of the second round qualifier on Saturday. The Falconettes are in close camping in Abuja where they're intensifying preparations for the crucial encounter. The junior female national team has had to make do with friendlies against male teams. Tennis and world number one Rafael Nadal just needs to win one more match to be assured of the ATP number one status through the end of the year. In Paris for the Paris Masters tournament and in the absence of world number two, Federer is a relaxed Nadal gave a characteristic shrug when asked about the importance of one more win. And that's it on Sports for tonight. I'm Barong Tony Aranta and I'm Arati back with a wrap. Kenyans have been divided over announcements of results of the presidential rerun. In the opposition stronghold of Kisumu, protesters armed themselves with stones and started fires in the streets. Many called on the IEBC chief, Wafula Chebukati, to come forward to tell Kenyans the truth, else they would not accept the results until Raila Odinga speaks to them. Speaking shortly after receiving his certificate of return, President Uhuru Kenyatta said he expected the opposition to challenge his victory in court and that any dialogue would have to wait until the constitutional process is done. Former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort, former Trump campaign official Rick Gates have both pleaded not guilty to all 12 charges brought against them, including conspiracy to launder money. The charges do not relate to Mr. Trump's campaign, but to the pair's Ukrainian business dealings up till 2015. Meanwhile, former campaign advisor George Papadopoulos has confessed to lying to the FBI about the timing of his meetings with alleged go-betweens for Russia. He admitted the meetings happened while he was working for the campaign and not before, according to unsealed court documents. When he was interviewed by the FBI this January, Papadopoulos falsely claimed that he had met two figures with Russian connections before joining the Trump campaign in March 2016. In fact, he met them after joining the campaign. One of them was an unnamed Russian woman who Mr. Papadopoulos believed had connections to Russian government officials. And on entertainment news tonight, music enthusiast Solani Otedola takes her first professional step within the Nigerian music industry. Victoria Idu has more. On Entertainment News tonight, 
It's a homecoming showcase for Tolani Otedola, daughter of business mogul and Forbes rated African billionaire Femi Otedola. Like her now popular sister Florence, popularly known as Copy, Tolani, a music graduate who also toured a good number of countries across the world for musical purposes, has chosen to apply as an entertainer as her proud father hosts his friends and associates to an exclusive VIP showcase as his daughter makes a conscious beat to announce her passion and its history to the world. Veteran singers Raskimono and Orisk Willike lead other entertainers of Delta State origin to headline the Delta State Unity concert, Tag the Power of Wands. The fully packed events, which also features comedians and actors, including MC Shakaran and Ang Sanuku, is created to propagate peace across the 25 local government areas of the multi tribal state. <laughs> And on the movie front, filmmakers across Africa and beyond have converged in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria for the 17th installment of the annual African International Film Festival. The opening ceremony, which drew in top Nollywood acts and government officials, screened the critically acclaimed Zambian movie, I Am Not a Witch, on its opening night. And that'll be all for tonight. Thank you for watching. It's back to the news at 10. Thanks, Victoria. And the main news again, President Mahmoud Buhari today sacked the suspended secretaries of the government of the Federation, Virtue Lawal, and former Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, Ambassador Ayoke. He has appointed Boss Mustafa as the new SGF. That is the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.